Hi everyone, is that helping? Is it still looping? Let me know. I do have to say, I've been noticing with, um, I think YouTube has done an update <laughs> for the app. And um, I've been noticing some really kooky, kooky things going on. So, oh great. Okay, it seems like it doesn't sound like I'm in an, a spaceship and where I'm just repeating myself over and over again. So, okay, it seems like we're good. Then I will go ahead and continue talking this way so you guys can hear me clearly, no problems. Please don't give me technical difficulties. That gives me anxiety <laughs> doing these lives. You know, you, ha you just have like a preconceived notion of going into these lives and just wanting everything to just work out, you know, properly. And then when it, nothing goes your way, it just makes it so frustrating to, to do these lives but we're here we're gonna push through it thank you so much for being here hey everyone it's tiana from the maniology team here with our weekly live every tuesday at 1 30 p.m hawaii standard time you can find us here on another nail stamping journey whether it's a tutorial technique or hack we're here to discuss the details and i'm so help happy you guys could be here to join me so um we got a lot of things to cover today and uh but before i get into all of that just make sure you stay up to date on all our exciting nail art and never miss another Maniology Live. Please hit the subscribe button if you love our videos and don't forget to share with your friends, family, uh, dog, whatever. Leave a comment with your suggestions for any future content you'd like us to uh, do. And if you're looking for some really trendy and fashionable pieces to add to your wardrobe, look no further. Uh, Maniology just released a new merch line which includes like graphic tees, hoodies, totes, and more. So you can go to our website at www.maniology.com to check that out, which is available right now. Uh, show of hands, show of hearts, show of stars, something. How many of you got your hand on some merch? I'd like to see in the comments. I'm just gonna go ahead and clean that off. <laughs> Yay! Got some people. Hello, hello. Thank you so much for joining. I won't lie. So today's live, you know, at this point, there's nothing to it but to do it. Let's just get right into it. Um, you know, if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. Please stay if you'd like. I love for um, anyone to stay in our lives that's awesome but you know today's live if you're just learning how to do reverse stamping and that's really the reason why you are here I'm gonna be up and up this is not the video um, a few weeks ago I did do a part one and I'd recommend watching that video which I've linked in the description um, and that will go through the basics the really simple reverse stamping but today is not going to be the video but up to you feel free to stick around I'm here for your viewing pleasure if you want to stay so there's that. Um, I'm trying to think. I should probably go in maybe a little bit tighter. I just start kind of laying some things down. But um, I'm sure some of you are wondering what is making this video a part two. Um, honestly, I think it's about the creativity. It's about the details. It's about the line work, the focus, and all of the polishes. So trust me when I say that this workspace right here that looks all clean and white and you know sterile is gonna get real Jackson Pollock real fast. So don't worry about that. That's what stamping is all about. It's about the creativity. So um, yeah, <laughs> but First thing I want to really talk about is the um, comparison of plates. So comparison meaning um, I have actually, what do you call? First, let me show you something. We are going to be doing reverse stamping, but like a very um, concentrated, 
very let me turn on that light we're gonna need I'm gonna need a lot of light look at these two okay nothing is wrong with this image of course beautiful very detailed I was inspired by desert landscape today so I'm sorry if I'm not if you guys really wanted me to do that daisy design that uh, you saw on the thumbnail I kind of switched up the game a little bit creativity kind of took me in a different path I hope that's completely okay with you guys but I wanted to show that you know with reverse stamping there is really no comparison with something like this okay so beautiful beautiful design but kind of flat but if you look at this design there's just so much detail okay can you guys see that was it coming in clear For any of you, if it's getting a little blurry, please let me know. Um, if it's okay for um, most people, then uh, we'll just go in and restart. Or I'm sorry, you can go in and restart and we'll be here. You can catch us whenever and rewind this live. But look, no comparison between the two. And if you want to see a comparison of, you know, a very basic reverse stamping, this was the design that I had done in part one. But look at this, a reverse stamping, a really basic one, and this. Very, very different. So today we're going to sit down and work with something like this. Like I said, creativity took me all over today, as creativity does. So instead of fighting the current, I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> so that's kind of what makes this a part two. Another thing is a comparison of plates. So I wanted to kind of focus. So here, you'll see some really basic shapes, very simple. Um, the line work, especially for this, is pretty... Um, I wouldn't say it's really thin, especially you can tell the thickness between this and this. But you know, in general, line work that is thicker, it's more forgiving when you're doing uh, reverse stamping, especially when you're starting out and you're trying to really learn how to best use your detail brush and things like that. So, you know, if you compare the line work like this to say, for instance, I have another really simple. The plate itself probably doesn't look simple, but if you take certain aspects of this, like this, um, this is a really simple design because it's basically colored for you when you put the polish on. But there are very simple concepts that you can take out of here and just do really one color. But compare this plate to this plate. Instantly, you can see the difference between the detail that is being asked of the artist. I mean, that, that's pretty much the only way I can really explain it is that this, I feel like is so straightforward and it's kind of like, hey, please stamp me with whatever color you want. You know, it's meant to be very um, kind of simplistic in nature. This draws you into a whole story, I feel like. I mean, not to get like poetic and you know, like, um, I don't know, funny with my words and stuff, but that's kind of what it, it, it kind of screams to ask for more attention. You know, you see succulents, you see all kinds of different, uh, just different kind of plants. Everything has like its own detail over here. You know, you see more than one plant in the scenery. Not all of the flowers may have like the same um, color. So I just feel like it's requiring the artist to kind of take a look at the design and really kind of see how you, you know, you want to map off the design. Let's look at another plate here. So this is the, the, the blah, 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 excuse me, rewind. This is the design that I'm going to use today. And I just loved it. I was really inspired by looking at this one succulent um, 
Succulents are so pretty and colorful. I don't know, I feel like my, my mind just forgot that. But look at this too. You have like different cacti plants, um, cacti, cactuses. Yeah, English is, I don't know sometimes if it's my first language, but um, there's just so much you can do. And um, funny, because right off the bat, I do want to say that um, there is nothing more, uh, you know, especially as I was working on this, this particular image, but nothing will make you feel more inadequate about the polish selections that you have, unless you are a polish hoarder, <laughs> than doing a plant or a landscape scenery that requires so much green. Okay, now when I say that, this is just a small portion. Okay, I know I'm, I'm zoomed in, but this is just a small portion. Okay, let me just show you. This is the design. I've already done some of this because um, although I know you guys want to see the whole process and I'm willing to do it with you all, but this is a process. And if you can imagine, I've done one, two, three, four, six, six different greens in just this one image. So, you know, if, if you're ever wondering why Maniology puts out so many colors, we're of like a similar shade, um, yeah, it's because you'll need all of the shades of green, the shades of green in between. You'll need the relatives. You'll need relatives you've never met. You'll need their cousins. You'll need everything, okay? So um, with that said, because I know sometimes we get comments and stuff where it's like, oh my gosh, we're getting another blue. When you're doing reverse stamping, I feel like it's so crucial for me to say how important it is to get all of the shades because when you need it for very detailed designs, this is the reason why. Okay, so like I said, when you find yourself in that situation, remember what I said. The greens, the greens in betweens, you'll need the cousins, the grandmas, the uncles, the long distance cousins you've never met before. You'll need all of them. <laughs> and thank you for coming to my TED talk about that. Um, so yeah, let's see. I, I think the best way is to just kind of go in, make a start. All of the rules apply um, just like part one. So go ahead and set up your workspace. You will need a detail brush. I personally think when you are doing an advanced uh, level of reverse stamping, there's really not a need for a thick detailed brush. Um, let me see if I can show you a comparison of what I what it is that I mean. You know, not all um, brushes are created equal. <laughs> so I did all of this coloring in with the thinnest brush, this one. I wouldn't even dare to touch something this thick um, just because this whole, all of the little leaves and all the leaves in between required a really thin brush. So, you know, it's just something I really wanted to mention that Again, you know, detail brushes, not all of them are created equal. I really do recommend you can use one brush, but make sure it is the thinnest brush um, point that you have to get into all of these really, really fine lines. Okay. You'll need 50 shades of brown. You'll need 50 shades of green, all of the colors, all the primary colors, everything. So I hope you guys remember me saying that. Okay, I should probably put that on a t-shirt. That would be kind of fun. But I, part of it I meant to be funny, but there is a part where it's, it's really true. Because I feel like if I didn't have all of the greens that best represented, of course, thank you Maniology, because I work here and I have the accessibility to whatever colors that um, I have here on our wall, which is pretty much everything. 
would I have had the ability to have such a detailed design such as this? No. It, it would still, I think to me personally, it would probably still look pretty flat, the image, if I had all of the same green, you know? So to really get all of that definition and to look at all the different leaves, foliage, cactus, whatever, succulents, I mean, I really needed to have all of the colors. So, you know, I think if you're an artist, if you're into crafts, if you are, I, I never done knitting and stuff like that before or crochet, but I'm sure it's the same thing. You need all of the color yarn. You cannot just have one black. Even if you have two different, two blacks that look almost exactly the same, one shade is slightly off, there's a difference, right? Ladies, if you are, or, or them, they's, everybody, if you are putting on makeup on your face, one red is not the same as another red. So we need all the colors. I think the same idea applies. And you're not a hoarder. You're just saving it for when you need it. Okay, so I think I want, even though I keep showing you guys this image, I wanna complete this but I know you guys wanna see me go and struggle on live. So let's just make a start. <laughs> I will try and see if I can do this as best as possible. Um, I think doing this on a live makes it a little bit more difficult because you know I can really hold this up close to my face, whereas I need to do this on camera. So, but enough with the excuses to you, let's just go ahead. I'm gonna do that design there. Sorry for the ring, but I really do need a detailed lighting today. We're gonna go in with our straight up black. Okay. Now we're just gonna put it on that image, succulent image there. I'm gonna get as clean of a scrape as I can. That is a pretty clean scrape. And look at that. That's so pretty to look at. I don't even need this plate, but if any of you, this is an old school plate, why not go with an old school, oldie but goodie, M068, full of beautiful succulents and cactus and, um, there's a lot of things you can do with that plate. So this is the design. It picked up beautifully. And now we're gonna go ahead and get started. I am using actually the, um, what do you call? The two-in-one stamper. So this actually comes together. But what I'm gonna use this for is my palette. Okay, so I'm gonna take my greens, I'm gonna start opening them up. Now, do, I know this is a do as I say, not as I do, in practice and stuff like that. When you're doing reverse stamping, you're gonna find yourself needing to actually get into the, these colors because you're gonna need your polish to be um, wet in order to make sure that you're not you know, reconstituting any of the black because you don't want that to get mixed up in the green. You don't want it to get muddled like that. So keep, you can keep the caps, you know, a little loose, but make sure you definitely close it after you are done. So I'm gonna just go ahead and open up my greens. Today, I don't think it's so much about the color. However, I can try and answer whatever questions you guys might have about the greens that I'm using today. I have, let's see, mint headliner, which I don't believe headliner is released for everyone just yet, but it will be. Actually, I think headliner just did release. Sorry about that. I have lime pine. I have sour apple. I got seedling. And I have limelight, okay? Some really beautiful kind of uh, greens that are in all different shades. And it doesn't even matter. I'm just gonna go ahead and make a start. Okay, just clean. 
paint off my brush because I've been using this all day. I have a lint-free cotton here. Come on. Sometimes having long nails is not exactly easy when you're trying to do things. This is just a lint-free pad that I'm using here. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. When you're doing this kind of advanced reverse stamping, I definitely recommend putting on a show that you don't need to watch, some music, because it's going to take time. I think something I do want to make a note of is the beading or the level of polish you need. This definitely requires a lot of focus. So I don't want uh, focus meaning like in the detail work. So I don't want a lot of polish on my brush. And I am barely touching the surface when I do this. I do recommend for images that are like this that you'll notice as I'm working, I like to twist. I don't keep the image in one, one place. I let this move as opposed to my brush move. Um, I also like this. You see what's happening with my pinky? The way that my hand is settling, it kind of gives me stability to keep my hand, you know, instead of going like free like this, I can actually use my pinky to help guide where the brush is going to go. Okay. That was getting too chunky. Again, you want to make sure that your, um, and all I have is 100% acetone on here. I'm just cleaning the brush going in the same direction. Um, and that's another reason why I like this. I like the monocle and stuff because it gives me a base, something to hold on to. I won't even lie, there will probably be a lot more quiet moments in here. I am playing some classical music in my head because talking and focusing, that kind of level of multitasking right now is hard. <laughs> I'm not even joking. So today, let me see if I can just be your Bob Ross and you can kind of just watch what I'm doing. And Dev will definitely be around to um, answer any of the questions you guys might have. Okay. So you'll notice that I never leave a lot of polish on the brush. but feel free to clean it as much as you need to. Okay. And so I don't get confused. I am going to try and paint similar plants that I'm going to use the same color in because I don't really want to go back and have to remember which green or have to research which green I did which I have done in the past, but don't really want to have to do that. So you see how like one little pat of polish is more than enough to paint any of these detailed images here. Okay. I think I may have pulled a little, a little bit of that leaf there. Let's check it out. Looks okay. All right. And you know, when in doubt, add more polish. Don't even worry about it. You're really not using a whole bunch. Light 
gently glide your brush over the image. Glide, I think, is a really good word instead of brushing because I'm really barely even trying to touch my stamper head here. And it's because I don't want to lift up any of the line work that's currently on the snapper head. Okay. The care of your brushes is so important, so make sure that you're not swooshing and going like all over the place you want it to stay nice and to a point. Okay. So let's see, let's go on with a different green. I'm gonna go ahead with this color here. Keeping, grabbing the polish so I still have a point. I'm gonna go ahead and do these fun little round leaves when in doubt clean your brush if it feels like the paint is getting a little too tacky don't worry, just clean it. And when in doubt, put more polish. It's just one little drop of polish. I love this brush too because you'll notice that I just actually went down the center of that stem there and it was just so simple to do that. And I didn't need a lot of polish, I just went ahead. Uh, once I put the brush onto the surface, I just dragged down lightly. This definitely requires a soft hand and a soft touch when you're doing this. I love how that's turning out. What do you guys think? So you see, I turn this, I twist this wherever I want to. I try and keep my hand placement in it about the same. You know, another thing too, I do recommend, I know you guys wanna watch the process, so that's why I'm just kind of going, going in on another part of the design. Sometimes, especially with an image like this, like instantly you'll notice that it's not gonna fit a full nail. Actually, I think a size like this, depending on how big your toe, the, the, this would be a really cute um, image maybe for a pedicure. Hint, hint, wink, wink, if any of you guys wanted to attempt that. But um, do, you'll notice I actually did a different background. I was trying to think of like a, a desert sunset, so I kind of came up with this kind of a sunrisey sunset, sunrise, sunrise. Um, but you'll notice that this design does not fit over the full nail, right? It's way too big. So go ahead and you know kind of look at it and see the parts that you need to color. You're not going to be necessarily you know beholden to color the whole design, however. If your nail is smaller you know just kind of take a look at it and see because you don't have to do the whole image so i'm probably just going to focus on any of the images that kind of are in the center here 
which I know like I'm not gonna get this bottom edge, but I probably will get this stem because nothing will be more irritating than you thinking that you were done and you missed out on painting an area. And then when you finally stamp it onto the nail, it lacks like the same vibe as everything that you just painted. Annoying. <laughs> And if any of you are wondering, oh my goodness, Tiana, you are using a lotus mat. Like, why are you putting polish onto the stamper? I know I've showed our um, viewers this in the past, but it's kind of like my own little hack. And it's so awesome because it allows me to clean my palette without using acetone. I love it. Now I'm looking at this, it's like, am I missing anything? No, I think that's like, same, 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 same plant. <laughs> okay, let's choose another green. One green does not fit all, so let's see. Go in with this, and let's do this little fun pokey one over here. Designs like this, it gets easier when you get to, I guess, like the base of the image and stuff, but these really fine pokey details, this is why you need a fine brush. It's easy to color outside of the lines when it you know there's a, a design that has um, really fine details or comes to a point like this so having a pointy brush detail brush very very important so I get for me I like to focus on like the fine details and brush down I don't come in with a lot of polish right at the tip if I can avoid it. Okay. Let's see, I think I saw a question. Okay, what is it? It says, Tracy is asking, hey, can you show us the three new plates? Oh, this must be something that somebody else is talking about because, or the three new plates that we just released. Is that what is being asked? Actually, I'm not even sure I have those plates by me. Is that what you're asking about, Trace? Tracy? I actually don't think I have those plates by me right now. Remind me at the end and um, I'll see if I can grab some of them for you. Okay. I need another green. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> Nope, use that one, use that one. See now this is the part where I'm starting to get a little confused 
confused about all of the greens that I'm using. So don't be like Tiana. Try and keep it straight if you can. I think when you're first starting out, you'll probably be a little bit more conscious of like how much polish you put onto the, the brush. But for me, because I'm feeling very comfortable, um, it's easier for me to gauge. And then also take a look at the design that you're going in on. Like for this, it naturally has a curvature into the petals. So it's okay to maybe have like a little bit more of a bead because Again, what I go is to the end or the tip and I drag down normally. I'll just kind of use whatever excess paint is on the brush to kind of get me as far as I possibly can with that image. If hopefully that makes sense. I won't even lie, I think I'm taking a risk right now because I haven't cleaned the brush in a little bit. It's getting kind of chunky. But I did that because I know that that particular image has a lot more real estate. But, you know, when it starts to get like this, you could be dragging a lot of um, unwanted parts of the design and you really don't want to do that, so. I was living on the wild side when I did that. <laughs> going in with a different green now oh tricky tricky okay yeah that's this way too much polish for that really thin design I need a lot less like no bead at the tip good this one just kind of dip at the dip at the tip <laughs> and drag down make sure your bristles at our point and continue that same technique Real nice line work just right through the center. That's why this brush is so awesome. Okay. And there you go. That looks really nice. And I do have to say, I mean, not bad for the coloring and you know going outside of the line work too the lines are pretty thin so that's what you can do okay in a different green and I'm going to color this image here It 
so funny because I wish this doing this had more like ASMR but it's actually a pretty quiet uh, pretty quiet job over here I'm gonna go in I believe with my last green which is the mint and start coloring in um, the succulent part that I'm gonna put a little bit more because the succulent is kind of big and I have two of them that I'm going to paint so I'll do this one the big one succulents oh my gosh I saw some like really blue pretty blue purple ones that got me really inspired you'll notice that in the previous design I did some orange on the tips oh my gosh you know I lived in Vegas for a little bit not a little bit kind of a long time but it was a while ago now and um, I just I, I think I just forgot how how ornate they look they just they're so pretty and it's so funny because like I said I was inspired by desert landscape and like so much desert landscape you know if you don't look at the plants you just kind of think oh my gosh it's just sand you know but it's really not a lot of like the desert plants have their own greenery or their own color it's pretty, really pretty and i'll be real i don't i don't know much about plants so my mom she was a green thumb <laughs> I, I didn't really inherit that so this is about the green s that I get, which is coloring nail art. <laughs> but already, as you can see, how much the design really comes to life when you start to add in a little bit of your creativity. Again, it's really not about the greens that I chose or the names that you need to know. It's really about, I mean, just adding these pieces all together. And look. It's coming out so beautifully. A hand light? A light? Oh, I'm sorry, a hand light. That's what I read. Excuse me. Not a hand light. You really need a light hand. Yes, I agree. You know, it's lives like this where um, it's so cool to see how our community just jumps in to help answer questions, things that they already know. Especially when I can't or Dev can't. So thank you so much for just being an awesome community. And um, for being helpful. And for any of you who are just joining us right now, we're doing a definitely a more complex reverse stamping. As you can see, I've already used six different color greens in this design. It'll come together very, very nicely. This is another reason actually why you'll want to um, kind of map out your image and stuff. You see how I colored that the darker green first where my brush is pointing you'll see that the leaves overlap but when I paint it now because I did the dark green first I can just go over that and I'll show you 
as I do it right now. So if you've never done reverse stamping, you'd be like, oh my gosh, you're coloring over that image. But no, I'm not because I've already done it. So it looks like it's in the back. Isn't that cool? Oh, I see a boo-boo, not a boo-boo, an area that I needed to paint in green and now I need to go and find that green. Darn. Okay, let's see, it's this particular one. So now I gotta go in and discover <laughs> which color I used. Dang it. Damn it, Janet. Okay. Let's see. Is this the color? Actually, did I hit it? I hit it. That's the color. That is the one. So what I was saying, if any of you are joining, our lives are fully rewindable so feel free to go ahead and rewind me <laughs> rewind this um or they're gonna go straight to our lives right after this so you don't have to worry about missing or you can just stay right now and then go ahead and watch the parts that you need to later but my name is tiana and i will be your maniology bob ross for today while we paint this beautiful succulent landscape in this beautiful reverse stamping concept. Oh, I'm in love. Are you in love? I'm in love. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, now the succulents. Alrighty. Watch this. Yes, I know some of the greens are still wet, but That is why I don't use my, uh, what do you call, no acetone. This is why I don't put like putting the paint on the Lotus. And now I have a clean palette. Simple, simple little nail hacks. Okay. So now, let me do, so I'm sorry, I'm just cleaning the green. I'm just gonna take a little break and cover the green because I don't think I'm gonna need any more of them at this point. Oh, Jasmine, Jasmine, welcome, welcome, yes. This is a sticky stamper. Sorry, I'm all zoomed in and I don't want to zoom out and zoom in and zoom out and zoom in. Um, but yes, that's what this is. You peel it here and you have, a, you reveal this awesome sticky page here. So it's kind of like a post-it, but it, yeah, this is our sticky stamper station. We have so, this version we had a few limited edition versions, so I'm trying to think. I know this one is available, this really cute cat in space design. And we have our um, Orig, original design that has actually more pages. This one doesn't hold as many, but when we use it, we go for broke and we utilize the page until we can't utilize it no more. Very, very useful. Okay, so I am gonna go ahead with my purples. Oh, I'm sorry. I see there's a comment here. Uh, ooh, CG, CG Paul SLP lying in bed with a migraine. That is a no-no. I am so sorry. I suffer from migraines myself. I know exactly how that feels. I'm glad that you're finding my voice to be soothing because um, 
you know, I don't want to get too excited and stuff, but it, getting excited in my speech. Because, oh. But I'm glad you find my voice soothing to be laying there with a migraine and just watching. So maybe it's good that I'm quiet and sometimes you can just watch. <laughs> okay, so I'm going in with this kind of violety purple here. And I'm going to do paint some of my succulents like purple. Actually, I have a, just a random question while I'm doing this for people who do suffer from migraines. If any of you do, please feel free to chime in. If not, maybe you might know somebody who has migraines, but um, is there, like, I know, I actually got my head scanned years ago to kind of see what was going on to make sure it wasn't something else. And luckily it wasn't, thank goodness. Um, but there was like some kind of recommended under the tongue kind of dissolvable medicine that was recommended to me. Honestly, I didn't want to take it just because I'm hard head like that. Uh, and I really, really don't like the doctors just because if we're being honest, maybe it's because I don't like listening to the doctors. Um, I, I think I've had my fair share of kind of like quacky doctors. Now, I'm not saying all. I, I've had my fair share of really, really good ones, too. But um, this rebelliousness that kicks in in me. But anyway, going back to the migraines. Any remedies? I remember I was exercising, and I actually got uh, a remedy from this physical trainer I was, ex you know, who was helping me. And he had told me to get like two lacrosse balls and put it under my, um, like at the base of my neck. I tend to kind of hold a lot of uh, pressure, I guess, over there, tension. And he put a kettlebell on me and I laid on that, which was very, very uncomfortable, but it, it worked. So I don't know if you have any recommendations. Is that gua sha? Cupping relieves my chronic allergies. Oh, interesting. Is, I don't even know if I said that correctly, but is that that cupping thing where you see people with, um, it almost like it kind of bruises the skin a little? I mean, I don't think that's the, the purpose. The purpose is to, I don't know, suck all toxins? Is that what it is? I'm, I'm not sure. So now I'm going in with a different purple and I'm just coloring the insides here. Um, actually, I think I just, Dev, um, actually I did not link all of the products being used here. So like the colors and stuff, I didn't link them because again, I don't think today's live is really about the colors being used. I'll be happy to tell you what colors I'm using. Um, I did, however, link like brushes and um, some things that I think are really crucial in doing reverse stamping. But, you know, to be honest, once I show you all the polishes and everything that I've done or that I've used in today's live, you know, it's really about the creativity and stuff. So you use whatever greens you have. Um, you may not even have this plate, but it's just a matter to show you that how detailed you can get by changing, you know, adding colors and um, doing this reverse stamping method. It's a lot of colors. Just the greens themselves. I use six greens, including the black. That's seven. 
and the purples that's eight nine eight nine colors so far and i'm not even done yet okay so for this next one let's get a little a little crazy i'm gonna go in with like this electric this is watermelon float which is like this really beautiful kind of electric salmon color and i want to see if i can go in the tips here and kind of outline <laughs> so i'm not coloring the whole leaf i'm just gonna kind of go on the outside That's kind of what it looks so far. Kind of outlining the succulent. You can see how that's turning out. Let's just clean off my brush a little. I know it looks like a lot of polish and stuff, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm not using a whole lot. The point is keeping the brush wet and using wet polish. Okay. Going in with a light touch. I'm just kind of adding in more of that electric salmon-y kind of detail. Let's see. I have another purple here. I'm gonna use, oh, this is a color we haven't used in a while. So now I'm going to color over all that orange. It doesn't even matter. I'm not even being really careful about this because the polish underneath, if I go, because um, you're thinking of the image backwards, I'm not covering any of the, the way that it's going to look from the underside is it's going to show like that. I'm really enjoying how all of this is turning out. And thank you so much for sticking around today. Because I know today is going to be kind of a long one, but I know you guys want to see it through. So let's wrap this up.
So I'm really loving how that turned out. Okay. And in this last succulent, I'm gonna go and kind of follow that same pattern. I kind of like the, fa I mean, the same uh, color series, and I'm just gonna, so it's gonna look like a pattern almost. Coloring, um, trying to focus on the outside leaves with this kind of grayish purple lavender, like a dark lavender almost. Again, I think if you were doing this on your own nails, you wouldn't even have to worry about painting this whole image, but for the sake of relaxation <laughs> and for the sake of kind of seeing how the technique works overall, I decided to kind of show you guys the process from start to finish, coloring a whole design. And if I'm also being honest, um, Hello, look how pretty that is, right? That's so pretty. And for some of us, we just wanna see pretty things, that's it. Oh, that's yeah that's another really good tip actually mystic kitten to color the whole design and see if you can use it over multiple nails that is a really good tip thank you for reminding me there's almost you know always so many things that we need to cover on these lives and i'm again glad that as a community you guys can just help to jump start my brain when i need it right All I was doing is kind of covering some spots I saw that needed to be covered. Saw some holes. Okay, so now I'm going to go on the inside here. You know this for areas that I have like, you know, it's not as um, detailed. I'll kind of tilt my brush a little bit to the side, get more polish so I can execute the painting as I need it. Alrighty. I think that pretty much I see Uh, tea. Brain fart. Brain fart. Okay, so if you're wondering, I'm just going in with a green. Because I saw a part. I think this is the same green. Oh, gosh. I got lucky twice. 
it's because they know I'm on a live right now. They meeting the stamping, the stamping goddesses. Like, no. See, they, they don't want to wait. Your audience doesn't want to wait another two hours for you to think of or remember which polish you used. All right. I think that wraps it up. You guys ready? Ta da! That looks beautiful. What do you guys think? I think this deserves heart eyes. Give me some heart eye emojis. This looks gorgeous. Okay, so now that this is done, let's kind of wait. There's not a lot of polish going on, but there definitely are some wet spots. So let's just put this on the side for now, okay? There's definitely wet polish on this. Let me let this dry for a little bit and then I'll clean that off too, okay? Go ahead and cap my polishes. Remember, when your eyes are tired and you feel exhausted, because that's just one image, <laughs> um, don't forget to cap your polishes. I won't even lie. I've done lives before where I've come back and actually one of the polishes were left open. Yay! Don't do that. Don't do that. I think this could be definitely a, um, my next art installation. That looks beautiful. <laughs> Alrighty, where's my tip here? My little tequila sunrise tip. So we're gonna go in here with the sticky base coat, your best friend, because after you've done all of that work, you don't wanna miss out on any of the bits and pieces that you just carefully carefully colored you want to make sure that if the intention is for you know say for instance if all of these pieces were to make it onto the nail you want everything to come off on that nail you don't want to miss out on anything so let's go ahead and open this up i'm going to put a thin coat what were the colors that was used for the this. Um, I believed I used Winnie, which is this yellow. Winnie and um, no, this is not Winnie. I think this is Buttercup since it doesn't have the sticker. And um, Watermelon Float and I put it onto a makeup sponge and I sponged it on. Excuse me. Sorry about that. You're welcome, Brenda. So going in with a small little dollop, thin layer. Even though I'm not gonna put anything over the tip, we're just gonna put it on because if you've ever, this is your first time using sticky, you have such a small window of time where the stickiness is your best friend and then it's not after that it just becomes regular top coat I mean I'm sorry regular base coat so I would say kind of like the magic number is maybe about 45 seconds or so um, if you're doing like a thin coat normally we'll just kind of wait it out and see and I'll kind of touch it if it feels tacky then that's the time to transfer Oh, Bees Nail Art says, so today and so is my six-year-old. Got him from school. Feels so sad for him. He's been vomiting. Oh, you know, um, I'm so sorry that, you know, you both are sick. That has been actually the case uh, here, too. Um, actually, my son was back-to-back -back sick. He finally uh, went back to school yesterday, of course, after being on spring break. And, um, okay, we're ready to go. 
Actually, I think I may have talked. And um, he had a double ear infection. I felt so sad for the guy. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. See, I guess for some of you, if say for instance you had some nail art, like I could see this as like a really cute accent on, say for instance, like the, you wanted to kind of line your nail like that, that'd be really cute. But for this one, since I'm doing a tip, I'm just gonna go ahead and lightly pat this down. Okay. Now what I would do is actually go in with a, I got a liner brush here, put some acetone on that so it's wet, not super wet, and melt or cut that polish so it doesn't fly back. So you see that piece right there. If this was on your actual nail, you would pretty much do the same thing. I would definitely recommend that when you're doing, what do you call, doing this kind of nail art, the advanced and stuff, and once you're transferring it onto your nail, definitely, definitely use a cuticle protector. Whatever you decide to use, that's fine, but put a cuticle protector on, because now you have to clean off any of that excess polish and you're using a whole lot of colors here. So that can really be a mess. So that will help to eliminate how much work you have to do. Okay. So I'm not gonna spend too much time, but it's just so it lays flat. But that's what it looks like. So now, we need our smudge free top coat. Okay. So you see that is what? And there you go. I Another tip I think is really good to know is um, putting a matte top coat over advanced, you know, style reverse stamping. Sorry, my, my mind is fried right now. Uh, the reason for that is I think it really helps to kind of enhance all of the colors that are being used in, des in the design. You see shiny creates a lot of glare, but if shiny is your thing, you like the shiny, then you stick it out with the shiny. Um, but this is, you can stop right here if you choose. I love how this turned out. Definitely look nice on the stamper, but it looks even better once it's on the nail. So I hope that you guys can go ahead and do this for yourself. Try this technique out. Give yourself some patience. I do have some tips and stuff that I want to kind of finalize before we cut off this live. This is the other one that I didn't finish. <laughs> but some tips, some things, some takeaways from this very, very long um, advanced live. Again, I think this is a really good... Uh, show that it does take time. So a pro for reverse stamping. There's no comparison. Again, no comparison for what the final look will look like. As you can see here, just given two examples. You know, so when you're doing reverse stamping, it just elevates your nail art and, you know, again, there's no comparison. However, the con is 
getting to the final is not a quick process. I've showed you that just now. It's not a quick process. You need to be patient, you need to be relaxed. It's time consuming, but the result, the results are worth it though, you know? Another pro is it draws your creativity out, you know? Um, it makes you exercise your creative muscle because if you don't use it, you lose it. <laughs> so have fun with it. This, uh, the con I think to that is that this is an advanced technique, uh, advanced stamping technique. And with all advanced techniques, it takes practice. So make sure you study the image, you know, kind of like what I've mentioned. Study the image. Take a look at some of, you know, where perhaps the image overlaps in certain areas. Um, make sure you have your polishes lined up. Kind of have a general idea of how you're going to, your plan of attack on how you are going to create the image. Um, see if there's overlapping line work that you have to take into consideration. There is definitely more consideration than stamping a very upfront design like this and calling it a day. So very easy, not very easy, but the results is just, voila, beautiful. Um, as I'm talking, I'm just going to go ahead and paint <laughs> um, a matte top coat. And hopefully as I'm talking, you guys can see what I mean by the detail work, okay? Um, a pro, each nail, nail look is so colorful, as you can see. Actually, it's already kind of getting mattified on screen, which is awesome. It's so colorful, but the con is, you need to buy all of the polishes. I will show you because every single color that I lay out here, as a matter of fact, after I do this, I am going to zoom out so you can see just how extensive. And I'm going to throw these other things in there because you need them in order to do. Look at that. Y'all think I'm playing. I'm not playing. Look at that. <laughs> I threw in these because they're a must have. Just the greens alone takes up pretty much a whole line of. Actually, it does take up a whole line. It'd have a green up here. This is why you need all the polishes. It turns out to be a beautiful, colorful masterpiece. But it's all thanks to these players over here. This would not be possible if this, you know, this wasn't possible. And I do want to say, after looking at this, I, I have that Snoop Dogg um, speech. I want to thank me. I want to thank me for believing in me. <laughs> I want to thank me for never giving up. This, this is the masterpiece. I want to thank me. <laughs> so you know what actually that's a really good speech you can give yourself after you are done doing your advanced technique <laughs> okay so some do's and don'ts do make sure you have proper lighting I would not have been able to do this if I was in a dark room okay so don't do this in a dark room make sure you have proper lighting um, but make sure it's just not too harsh because in general, that's not a really good situation to be using um, or doing, you know, um, stamping in general. Sometimes you get like really tricky pickups and stuff, but, but make sure you have good lighting. Um, do plan out your look ahead of time and your layout, the layout of your polishes. Um, don't rush, take your time. Make sure this, you know, this is a relaxing thing. You can turn it into a relaxing thing. It can be really, um, I don't know, it can just be really relaxing. Um, 
So make sure you have your sticky base coat, you know, you have your sweat free, make sure you have everything readily at your disposal. Um, and I think that nothing is wrong with the function of using, okay, the, the stamper, this little do that I'm gonna mention. Do use a circular stamper. I recommend the monocle as opposed to this, the rectangular. Nothing is wrong with this, okay, function-wise. You can pick up the image, you can paint on this, it does the same thing as the monocle. However, I'm talking more about ergonomics. You see how simple it is ergonomically to move the circular? Then, you know, having these points is not as simple as me moving the circular stamper. I feel like it takes more coordination for me to move my, my left. And I'm a right-handed person, but it's just, it's ergonomics. So do use, grab for a circular stamper when you are doing reverse stamping. It'll help to, you know, rotate the image as you need it, okay? So I think those are some really awesome takeaways. And that about wraps it up. I did see the comment about the three plates. Um, Give me a second. Let me see if I can go and find the plates that are being asked for really quick. And oh, Devin had a jam here. Oh, I, I know exactly which song that is. Um oh my was that Shaka Khan that did that song? Yeah, somebody can school me in the, the comments and see, but Okay, I believe the three plates that we just released, oh, okay. We're gonna start off with the doozy because Dev, Dev, hint, hint, wink, wink, you're gonna do a live on this. Actually, let me come in a little bit closer because I feel like, um, actually, no, I don't need this light anymore. So you guys can really see without the disruption. I'm not gonna remove the blue film. But this is our terrazzo plate. Dev, you, you're gonna, we're gonna show our audience how to use this. This, I feel like, is uh, Dev's brainchild. I can see all the possibilities of this beautiful, beautiful plate. However, when you look at it, you're kind of like, er? the brain kind of stops at that. So. If you look up Terrazzo, go on Pinterest, go on Google, there's so many cute manicures you can do with this particular plate. And I feel like we have a lot of accompanying plates that we've released um, in the past that really, really go really well with this concept. So, um, Dev is saying, so you notice that this particular plate has a numbering system. So they're meant to be layered we're still gonna show you how to use the plate, but I'll kind of explain the process. Each section is kind of layered, so you see A1, A2, A3, B1, B2, B3, and C1, C2, and C3. Basically, these are all meant to be layered one on top of the other, specifically. So you can add a total of like three different colors. However you decide to do your terrazzo design, um, that is the concept of this plate. So cute. Can't wait to use it. Can't wait to show you guys how to use it. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, and that was M359. Moving on, we have a really cute Bambi. <laughs> I call it Bambi. It's not Bambi. Um, but it has like woodland creatures. 
Um, so this is plate M36, I'm sorry, M356. And so you have some cute, you have a hare, you have, um, again, just some cute, really wildlife. Is that an elk here? with some beautiful foliage and stuff. Again, you can see where the greens will come in. Okay. And the last plate I believe that is being asked for is this Monet plate. This is gorgeous, okay so many things okay using the technique that we talked about today advanced stamping i could see so many beautiful art uh, nail art pieces being used with this particular plate so um if you're into monet you're into the classical art then m352 i think is perfect for you um yeah it just has a lot of really beautiful landscape scenery um flowers just really cool okay so now I think that this is gonna sign us off I hope that you guys enjoyed today's live I know Dev has been helping out with all of the comments today was a def a definite long one but I really appreciate all of you sticking around and hopefully you found um, this live to be extremely, extremely helpful. So I will see you guys in the next live. Have a really nice day. Have a nice rest of the week and pss, pss, stick around. We are actually in for a treat this week. We're gonna have a second live on Thursday because that is our Manny by Me release day. And what do we do on Manny by Me release? We do an unboxing. So. Dev will be here to do an unboxing with you and kind of showcase what the theme is going to be. I already saw a lot of conversation, so I hope you guys uh, join us on Thursday at 1.30 where we go ahead and uh, give you a treat for another live. But other than that, have a nice week. We will see you in the next live. Take care and bye.